The uh, committee will come to order. We'll ask the mem members here to take their seats. Uh, pursuant to notice, we meet today to mark up several bipartisan measures. Without objection, all members may have five days to submit statements or extraneous materials on today's business. And having confirmed that there are not contested amendments beyond the bipartisan amendments circulated to all office, offices yesterday, the ranking member and I intend to consider today's measures on block. And so without objection, the following items previously provided to members and also in your packets are going to be considered on block and are considered as read. They are eight, H.R. 1164, the Taylor Force Act, Royce Amendment 3 in the nature of a substitute, Connolly Amendment 1, and Cicilline Amendment 105. H.R. 1415, the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act, with Smith Amendment 58 and SBA Amendment 66. H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act of 2017, with the DeSantis Amendment 61 and the Schneider Amendment 53, and Donovan Amendment 32. We, all, we have the H.R. 3542, the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act, with the Schneider Amendment, 52. H.R. 3776, the Cyber Diplomacy Act of 2017, with Royce Amendment 76 in the nature of a substitute, Schneider Amendment 51, Castro Amendment 59, and McCall Amendment 75. House Resolution 336, reaffirming a strong commitment to the United States-Mexico partnership. House Resolution 401, urging all nations to outlaw the dog and cat meat trade with a Royce Amendment 79 in the nature of a substitute to House Resolution 401. House Resolution 407, condemning the persecution of Christians around the world. Royce Amendment 80 in the nature of a substitute. House Concurrent Resolution 90, condemning the ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya in Burma, and the Ingle Amendment, 64, in the nature of substitute to House Concurrent Resolution 90. I now recognize myself to speak on today's businesses. Today, we consider the Taylor Force Act, and let me start by thanking Congressman Doug Lamborn over here in the front row and uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin for their leadership on this important legislation. And I also want to thank our ranking member, Elliot Engel, for collaborating with me on this bipartisan text that we're taking up today. This bill is named in honor of a courageous and patriotic young American, Taylor Force, whose life was tragically sh cut short when he was murdered by a Palestinian terrorist. He was murdered in Israel. Since 2003, it has been Palestinian law to reward Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails with a monthly paycheck. Palestinian leadership also pays the families of Palestinian prisoners and suicide bombers. These policies incentivize terrorism. With this legislation, we are forcing the PA to choose between U.S. assistance and these morally reprehensible policies. And I'm pleased to see this measure move forward in both chambers with so much support. We also consider two measures targeting the dangerous Iranian proxy, Hamas. And I want to thank Congressman Mast for his leadership on H.R. 2712. This is the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act. Iran and Hezbollah are clearly working to extend their influence over Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip through increased financial and military aid. It is precisely Iranian support that has enabled Hamas to maintain power in the Gaza Strip for the past decade. Iran is also why Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad have thousands of missiles and rockets and continue dig digging tunnels. On and those tunnels are for terror. We were recently in one of those tunnels. Um, one that uh, Elliot Engel and I were in came up underneath an elementary school. And um, 
These are uh, on the border with Israel. While we work to address Iran's support for Hamas, we must also ensure U.S. partners in the region do not host or aid Hamas terrorists. And to that end, this bill has already had an effect. When the bill was introduced, Qatar was hosting senior Hamas terrorist Saleh al rari after he was expelled in 2016 from Turkey. Two weeks after this legislation was introduced, he, along with other Hamas terrorists, were expelled from Qatar. I want to thank Congressman Joe Wilson for authoring H.R. 3542, the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act. Hamas not only regards Israeli civilians with, um, not only targets them with kidnapping, but it, in, it also carries out indiscriminate rocket attacks. The terrorist groups also show a callous disregard for the lives of Palestinians it supports, supposedly represents by using them as human shields during times of conflict in direct violation of international law. This legislation holds Hamas and its sponsor, Iran, accountable for this monstrous practice. Next, we have H.R. 3776. This is the Cyber Diplomacy Act, which establishes U.S. international cyber, uh, cyberspace policy. The U.S. is increasingly under attack by foreign actors, and these actors are online. Now more than ever, we need a high-ranking cyber diplomat at the State Department to prioritize these efforts and to work with foreign governments. This bipartisan bill will help counter foreign threats on the Internet, and it's also going to help promote human rights abroad and will create new jobs, new economic growth here at home. We consider H.R. 1415, the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act, which seeks to improve the effectiveness of USAID's existing program to treat, control, and eliminate neglected tropical diseases. These diseases impact over one billion people worldwide, including many here at home. And I want to thank Mr. Smith for his work on this important bill. Next, we will consider House Concurrent Resolution 90, which condemns the ethnic cleansing of the Muslim Rohingya in Burma. In recent months, we have seen the horrific stories of young mothers torn from their burning homes, drowned children, mass executions. Many consider the Rohingya the most persecuted minority on earth. Importantly, this resolution builds on our recent hearing by not only calling for an end to all violence, but also for the military and government of Burma to allow refugees to return back to their homes. And I thank Congressman Crowley and I thank Ranking Member Engel for their good work on this measure. Our members have long advocated for the religious freedom of all minorities, and today we consider another measure to further this important work. House Resolution 407 highlights the persecution of Christian communities around the globe. Christians in a number of countries face oppression, assault, imprisonment, torture, death for their faith. This resolution reaffirms the U.S. commitment to combat violations of religious freedom wherever they occur and calls on all countries to end the persecution of Christians, whether such persecution is state-sponsored or incited by local factions or part of a deliberate campaign like terrorist organizations such as Boko Haram in the Islamic State. House Resolution 336 reaffirms Congress's commitment to the U.S.-Mexico partnership. There is bipartisan recognition that we need to continue working with Mexico in areas ranging from security cooperation to economic collaboration to promoting shared democratic values and principles. And as we, as we grapple with the deadly opioid crisis, it is critical that the U.S.-Mexico partnership remain strong so that we can confront the transnational criminal organizations that terrorize Mexico and that poison America's youth. I thank Ranking Member Engel and I thank Chairman McCall for their work on this measure. And finally, we have House Resolution 401. Protecting the world's animals has been one of the priorities for this committee and I'm proud to have sponsored legislation to this end. 
Today, we continue that work with House Resolution 401. This was authored by Representative Hastings. It has tremendous bipartisan support. It has over 100 co-sponsors. The consumption of dog meat has occurred in every corner of the world, and established dog meat markets still exist in Asia, which presents serious animal cruelty and public health concerns. The resolution urges all nations now to abolish the dog and cat meat trade and to enforce existing laws against such trade. I now recognize the ranking member for his remarks. Mr. Chairman, thank you for calling this markup. We are taking up a number of good measures, and I'm glad to support them all. I'll start with a resolution I authored with Mr. McCall of Texas, underscoring the importance of a U.S.-Mexico partnership based on mutual respect. We've seen many highs and lows in this bilateral relationship over the last century. In recent years, things have been headed in the right direction with closer ties on a range of issues from security to economic cooperation. But in my view, things have gotten off track. I worry that we're going to squander the good progress we've made unless we change course. Mexico is an important partner. It's the partnership we want to see thrive. This measure puts us on record reiterating just how important this relationship is. I'm grateful to you, Mr. Chairman, for bringing it up today, and I ask all members to support it. And now I'll turn to three measures dealing with Israel's security. First measure designed to push, the first is a measure designed to push the Palestinian Authority to stop the so-called martyr payments, which incentivize terrorist activity. We've had a lot of debate in Congress about the right way to do that. I believe the approach we're taking today strikes just the right balance. I was glad to work with Chairman Royce to ensure this legislation would not have unintended consequences, such as targeting humanitarian and democracy assistance or security cooperation. And uh, the Chairman and I worked very closely together to come out with a really uh, good bill. And we have two measures aimed at curbing the violence of the terrorist group Hamas, which is a threat to Israel's citizens and security across the region. I also want to thank Representatives Wilson and Moulton for their leadership in authorizing the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act. The use of he human shields is a disgusting and cowardly practice, and it will never lead to peace. This bill would use new sanctions to crack down on anyone supporting or taking part in this horrific practice. Moving on, I'm glad to support the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act from Representatives Mast and Gottheimer. This bill is intended to send a message to foreign governments that they ought to stop funding Hamas. Once they have stopped funding Hamas, we will maintain pressure to keep it that way. But this bill is not the United States taking sides in the Gulf conflict. My vote for this legislation today is not a vote of approval of any actions that pit one side against another. The breakdown in relationships in the Gulf has not been in our interest, and I would urge all parties to come together and resolve their differences. Next, as the Rohingya crisis continues to rage, I want to thank the Chairman for his sustained focus on this tragedy. We continue to see reports of Rohingya refugees fleeing to Bangladesh and widespread hun hunger and malnutrition for those who are left behind. Both Chairman Royce and I believe that what is occurring in Burma's Rakhine state is ethnic cleansing perpetrated by the military and a direct failure of the Burmese government to protect its people. This resolution calls for the re-imposition of targeted sanctions against those responsible for this violence. It's what we should be doing, and along with cha the, the chairman, I'll continue to press this issue. I'm also glad to join the chairman to co-sponsor the Cyber Diplomacy Act of 2017. In recent years, malicious cyber activity has become a th greater threat to the United States and our allies, most notably with Russia's illegal interference in our election last year. We cannot allow foreign governments to meddle in democracy or conduct cyber attacks against us and our allies. This measure would help the United States shape international cyber norms, ramp up co coordination with our allies to stiffen cyber defenses, and coordinate responses to future malicious activity. This bill also calls for maintaining the Office for Cyber Issues at the State Department. Now more than ever, we need a high-ranking cyber diplomacy to prioritize these efforts 
and ensure we keep the Internet open, reliable, unfettered, and secure. The fact that the uh, uh, State Department has not yet filled so many important vacancies is a constant irritant to me, and this is just another example of that, and I would urge the President and the Secretary of State to fill these senior vacancies as soon as possible. I'd like to also thank Chairman Royce for working with me on his amendment to Mr. Grothman's measure condemning the persecution of Christians around the world. Freedom of worship is a basic human right, yet we see religious minorities all over the world subjected to violence and persecution. It is unacceptable for anyone to suffer because of how or even if they choose to worship. We must speak out against such injustices or any other assaults on the universal, universal freedom of press, rights to organize, or LGBT quality. This is a very important bill about the persecution of Christians around the world. I am also pleased to support Mr. Smith's bill, the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act. So-called neglected tropical diseases take a particularly high toll on poor populations in developing countries. Some of these diseases cause blindness, stunted growth, and cognitive disabilities, which can stifle progress and prosperity in affected countries. That's why a decade ago, President Bush launched the Neglected Tropical Diseases Program at USAID, and the Obama administration carried this work forward. Mr. Smith's bill would make sure our existing efforts are working as efficiently as possible. Unfortunately, the President has called for a 25 percent cut to this USAID program. I think that would be a colossal mistake. We cannot hope to defeat neglected tropical diseases or advance our global health priorities if we fail to keep investing in those areas and recognize the opportunities we have for collaboration across our programs. And lastly, I'm pleased to support Mr. Hastings' resolution. The measure condemns the cruel practices surrounding the dog and cat meat trade in many parts of Asia and calls for an end to such practices. Once again, I thank all our members for their efforts on these pieces of legislation and to the chairman for his leadership, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Engel. We go to Eliana ross Layton in of Florida. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the rank ranking member Engel for bringing forth these important measures. Regarding the Palestinian Authority, I would like to remind this committee that the administration already has the tools it needs to withhold U.S. assistance to the Palestinian Authority and the West Bank and Gaza. In fact, every six months, the administration sends to this committee a report that finds that the PA and the PLO are not living up to statutorily required commitments. That report is accompanied by a sanction to downgrade the status of the PLO office in DC, which is then sadly immediately waived. So what is the benefit? What does the US get? Or worse, what does that tell the Palestinian leadership? It shows that there's no willingness by the United States to hold them accountable for their support for violence or terror or other horrid acts, and the cycle continues. So here we are today looking to add more tools to the toolbox. The Palestinian Authority, the PLO, Abu Mazen, Hamas, they should all be held accountable for their acts of terror. The entire committee agrees and their support for terror. They should not be rewarded. And that is why the Taylor Force Act, though I believe that we should not allow for exceptions and carve outs in this legislation should be supported because that flexibility will be used once again to circumvent the spirit of the law and congressional intent. The fact that the Palestinian leadership rewards terrorists and their families is sickening, but what's worse is that the thought that the American taxpayer may be inadvertently supporting this. Every dollar we spend in the West Bank and Gaza, every time we pay off the Palestinian debt to Israel, we are freeing up the Palestinian leadership to allocate money to, for its pay to slay program. Because money is fungible, we should not allocate one cent in the West Bank and Gaza until we know that Abu Mazen no longer pays money to terrorists and their families. I have no doubt that given the choice between badly needed infrastructure projects or paying terrorists, that Abu Mazen will forsake the Palestinian people to pay terrorists, pay to slay, that is his program. But let that, this, let that be his hard decision to make. Don't let us make it easy for him to do both. And so I support the Taylor Force Act. 
And in that same, Mr. Ch in that same vein, Mr. Chairman, I fully support the bill of my colleague from Florida, Mr. Mast, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Act. Hamas is a terror organization responsible for countless attacks against Israel, but also responsible for the deaths of at least 25 US citizens. It's also a beneficiary of Turkey, of Iran, of Qatar, not exactly the confederacy of morality. Qatar has pledged nearly $1.5 billion over the past five years for reconstruction efforts in Gaza. And if you think that Hamas hasn't delivered a good portion of this for its own use or benefit, and that Qatar doesn't know about that diversion, then I have a bridge from Miami to Havana to sell you. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Obviously, I don't have much of a voice today. I support all of the bills, and I will give my, uh, my remarks uh, for the record. Thank you. I yield I back. I see you. You yield back more time than I. <laughs> thank you very much, Eliana, for making those points. Jerry Connolly of Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you and your staff, as well as the ranking member and his staff, for cooperating with us on a humanitarian carve-out, which has to do with vaccinations, which is why I'm wearing my Save the Children tie today. Uh, you know, infectious disease does not respect the border, and outbreaks of infectious diseases uh, damage, of course, innocent lives, children, and can cross that border. And so we, we wanted to make sure that was addressed. We also want to take care as the ranking member indicated, that we don't unwittingly destabilize the situation uh, in decisions we make about uh, what support we do or do not provide the Palestinian Authority. But I've always had a rule in politics, I will not defend the indefensible. The bill before us today calls out the indefensible. We simply cannot sit by and watch the Palestinian Authority reward abhorrent behavior, suicide bombers and terrorist uh, perpetrators by providing payments to their families. That both rewards the behavior that we find indefensible and encourages it. It must stop. And to get the attention of the Palestinian Authority, we have this bill before us today, and I will support it. Um, and so I, I hope that the action we take today will lead to the desired outcome, which is the secession of this abhorrent practice uh, that affects both the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. Um, it is, I think, an essential ingredient if we're going to proceed with any kind of two-state solution and the peace process. And so I'm glad for the legislation before us. I want to thank the chairman and the ranking member for the thoughtful way in which they have made changes to the bill uh, that take into account the reality on the ground and the long-term repercussions of actions we take today. And I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Thank you very much. I, I want to go now to uh, Mr. Chris Smith. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for uh, bringing all of these very important bills uh, before the committee. I'm especially grateful that H.R. 1415, the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act, uh, is under consideration. We passed it out of this committee last Congress, regrettably, Title II, which is also a Title II in this bill, uh, never got out of energy and commerce or financial services. We're going to make an all-out effort again there. Uh, just in brief, H.R. 1415 is a comprehensive bill to combat a group of 17 parasitic bacterial and viruses which blind, disable, disfigure, and kill victims from among uh, of about 1.4 billion people worldwide, especially in the poorest of poor uh, countries. These include things like dengue fever, uh, round whip and hookworm, schistosomiasis, which is parasitic flatworms, about a quarter of a million people up to uh, 250 million people uh, carry this horrific disease inside of their intestines. Uh, it disproportionately affects children. WHO says that there's 78 endemic countries, uh, and for a very low-cost commitment, these worms and these other parasitic and diseases uh, can be mitigated and even abolished. I would point out to my colleagues, and uh, Mr. Engel, he is right, the Trump budget would have cut by about 25 percent our neglected tropical diseases budget, but so did Obama. Every year he offered to cut it by 20 percent, and I and others made a beeline to the appropriators each and every year and said, Minimally, let's straight line it at $100 million uh, for that program. 
which we got, which is in the current bill that's pending in the House and the Senate uh, for appropriations, uh, but it's not enough. This bill talks about strategy. Title II of this legislation, uh, which really will make a huge difference domestically and internationally, uh, and it's not under consideration here, but just for the sake of the members, I hope that we can ask Energy and Commerce to mark it up this year. It creates centers of excellence to study this. Back in the year 2000, I wrote the laws on combating autism. The mainstay of that legislation were centers of excellence, and that's where we learned, uh, both in CDC and at the NIH, what to do, what the prevalence is, and again, best strategies going forward. We also have an important uh, panel, an expert panel, a blue ribbon panel that will be established uh, to study worm infections. I mean, to think, we talk about feeding the future, and I, as you know, we did the Global Food Security Act last year. Uh, food and hunger and mitigation of hunger uh, is, is an overwhelming priority, bipartisan in Congress and, uh, and, and really among many countries around the world. We don't want to feed the worms and have a situation where children, uh, especially children, uh, and the morbidity rate is very high. It often doesn't kill, although it does, but co-infections, opportunistic infections, take advantage of d diminished immune systems, and these kids succumb to other diseases because they are walking around with bloated bellies because they're carrying around worms. So this is a, an all-in type of effort to say we can end neglected tropical diseases, uh, and we need better strategy, we need resources, and, and I do strongly urge members to support. I want to thank Mr. Meeks, the prime Democratic co-sponsor for working, uh, Karen Bass, the ranking member of our committee, other members who have uh, joined on as co-sponsors. Uh, I thank you, uh, but this is a bill whose time has come, and I do hope, again, and I thank you, Chairman, uh, for bringing it to the committee today. On all the others, I would ask of unanimous consent to revise and extend, just briefly on the Christian persecution issue. Uh, right here in this meeting room, uh, the worldwide persecution of Christians, uh, there's no other group on the face of the earth that are being discriminated against, killed, forced to conversion to other faiths uh, than Christians. Whether it be in China, North Korea, many parts in the Middle East, uh, as you all know, we passed legislation, H.R. 390, pending over on the Senate side, to help the Christians who are the subject of genocide uh, by ISIS. But a, uh, a man named Adamo stood right where the staff is sitting right now and told how he was forced by Boko Haram out of his house, a gun, AK-47, put to his head, and he was told, you convert right now to Islam by a Boko Haram terrorist or I'm going to blow your brains out. And the man said, are you ready to meet, are you ready to die for your faith? He said, yes, I am. He pulled the trigger and he blew his face away. And when he told that story in this room, uh, and I met him in an IDB camp in Jost, Nigeria, uh, you could have heard a pin drop. That is the everyday experience of Christians around the world, including in India, including in North Korea especially, and in the People's Republic of China, where systematically Xi Jinping is trying to eviscerate all faiths, including Falun Gong, which Ileana Ross Layton has led so uh, nobly on, but also the Christians, and probably more so. Arguably, there are more Christians in China than anywhere else in the world. They are underground, and they are repressed. This is a great resolution. I commend my friends for offering it. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Ted Deutsch of Florida. Uh, thank you, Chairman Royce and Ranking Member Engel. The measures before us address a range of crucial foreign policy challenges, taking steps to support the U.S.-Mexico relationship, fight tropical diseases, combat cruelty against animals in Southeast Asia, strengthen cyberspace policy, condemn the persecution of Christians, protect the Rohingya Muslims in Burma, and support Israel in the face of persistent terrorism. Uh, and I'm supportive of all of them. I want to thank the chair and ranking member for their tireless work, especially to bring forward uh, this improved Taylor Force Act. This bill will help end the horrible practice uh, where Palestinian Authority pays salaries to terrorists and their families. More money for worse crimes, unambiguously incentivizing terrorism against civilians. Beginning in late 2015, Israel faced a new wave of violence, what was often called lone wolf or knife intifada. Instead of coordinating near daily bombings in cafes, nightclubs, and on public buses, as happened earlier in the 2000s, we instead saw deadly stabbings, shootings, and car rammings on a regular basis in which dozens of Israelis and even Americans were killed. And that included American students Taylor Force and Ezra Schwartz. On March 8, 2016, Taylor Force 
a 28-year-old West Point graduate and Vanderbilt graduate student who had fought in Iraq and Afghanistan was stabbed to death on the promenade in Jaffa by a young Palestinian terrorist who injured 10 others, including a pregnant woman. Taylor, by all accounts, was loved, he was humble, enjoyed playing the guitar, he was an Eagle Scout and an Army veteran. His dad described him as an all-American kid who made sure that everyone around him felt good. A friend of his in Nashville said simply, he made people better. A few months earlier, another American was killed while visiting Israel on a gap year before starting university the next year. Ezra Schwartz was sitting in traffic at the Gush Etzion Junction on his way to volunteer at a conservation park built in memory of the three teenagers who had been kidnapped and killed by Hamas in June 2014. A terrorist opened fire with a submachine gun, killing Ezra as well as an Israeli teacher and a Palestinian from Hebron. But rather than work to punish this horrific terror, current Palestinian law instead incentivizes it. The terrorist who murdered Taylor Force and who was killed by Israeli police responding to the scene, his family will now receive payments for life an amount, at an amount three times the average annual salary in the West Bank. And the terrorist who killed Ezra Schwartz, who is now in Israeli prison, he will get paid more than $3,000 a month, many times higher than the average Palestinian worker. Under this payment program, the Palestinian Authority has given more than $1 billion to convicted terrorists over the past decade, more than $300 million per year. The law includes a well-defined sliding scale where the more serious the act of terrorism, the longer the prison sentence, and consequently, the higher the salary. So if you're sentenced to life in prison for a horrific terror attack, you get four times more money per month than if you're sentenced to just a couple of years in prison for a lesser attack. Now, it is the job of government to deliver services to its people, including welfare to those who need it most, which would include giving a grieving a widow who suddenly has to take care of her family without the breadwinner, what she needs. But it sends a powerful message to know that if a Palestinian man dies in a car accident, it, that his family gets nothing. But if that same man were to drive his car deliberately into Israeli citizens, civilians, his family will be taken care of for life. That is not welfare. That's incentive to terror. It is pay for slay, and it must end. This piece of legislation has been carefully written in order to target only those funds that directly benefit the Palestinian Authority, thereby creating real incentives for the PA to meaningfully end this practice. I congratulate the chairman and the ranking member for crafting today's amended language in a way that will pressure the PA to stop this practice without damaging our vital investments in humanitarian assistance and grassroots people-to-people -people programs that are essential to achieving our overall objective of peace. The pursuit of a negotiated two-state solution requires a commitment to peace. And when the PA pays terrorists for attacks on innocent civilians, that real commitment for peace simply does not exist. I urge my colleagues to support the Taylor Force Act in order to, bring, in order to prevent more senseless killings. Taylor Force served our country to advance and protect peace. His life was taken by terrorists. But this legislation honors his name and his memory by stopping a terrible, dangerous, abhorrent practice of paying terrorists. The PA must stop these payments. This bill will advance peace. I urge my colleagues to support it, and I yield back. Mr. Steve Shabbat of Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I support all the excellent uh, measures before us here this morning. I'll speak out briefly on just one. Uh, Mr. Carley and I introduced uh, House Concurrent Resolution 90 to condemn the Burmese uh, military systematic attacks on the Rohingya in Burma. For far too long, the Burmese military has repressed the Rohingya, denying them political and civil rights, most notably citizenship, and making them a stateless people. Uh, it's no secret that the Burmese military sees the Rohingya uh, really as uh, invaders of their territory. That's why they jumped at the opportunity in August when a rogue group of Rohingya attacked military outposts to attack the entire Rohingya population and to drive them from the country in what's been called a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. 
these attacks and attacks by security services and mobs have caused over 600,000 Rohingya to flee Burma for Bangladesh. At least 250,000 of these are children. Further credible uh, human rights organizations have documented the abuses these civilians have suffered, and news reports uh, have shown the absolute horrors that they have faced. Unfortunately, attacks like these are pretty much business as usual for the Burmese military in its attempt to suppress Burma's many other ethnic groups. Therefore, much of the country remains in a state of civil war. Even though uh, some institutions have been turned over to civilians in, in recent years, the military continues to control too much of the government, and it remains too independent from civilian leadership. In light of this pattern and the Burmese military's attacks on the Rohingya, Mr. Crowley and I have sought to bring much needed attention to the situation in Burma and work toward specific, tangible, and productive responses from the United States. This is why uh, we have corresponded twice, once in September and once in October, uh, with Secretary Tillerson on the issue, urging him to apply targeted sanctions to the Burmese military and work with the international community to bring these attacks to an end. I want to thank many members of this committee for uh, signing on to those letters. The, the attacks on the Rohingya are absolutely, entirely uh, disproportionate uh, and unacceptable uh, to the initial uh, attacks which took place uh, on the, on the uh, outpost previously. Today's resolution sends this message. That's why I would urge my colleagues uh, to support uh, HCON Res 90 to condemn the ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya and call for a swift end to the chaos and the violence in that uh, very, uh, very challenging part of the, of the world. And I again want to thank the members of this committee that have been active in this effort. I yield back. Mr. Joaquin Castro. Uh, thank you, Chairman Royce. Uh, first, on the Taylor Force Act, I support it. And the United States has offered aid to the Palestinian Authority for programs in Gaza and the West Bank because we want to see the conditions improve in those places. But the United States cannot be party to what amounts to state paid murder compensation. And so I hope today will be a strong signal and an incentive for the Palestinian Authority to change its ways. On the resolution dealing with the Rohingya, first, thank you to my fellow Democratic Congressman, uh, Democratic Caucus Chairman Joe Crowley, and also to my colleague on the committee, uh, Mr. Shabbat, for their work on highlighting what is the worst case in modern history, contemporary history at least, of ethnic cleansing. Since August 25th, 615,000 people, Rohingya, have left Burma, most of them for, na from, for neighboring Bangladesh. Thousands have been raped or killed, and yet a few hours ago it was reported that our Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, refused to call this a case of ethnic cleansing, despite the fact that the United Nations has called it exactly that, as Mr. Shabbat said in, his, uh, in the quote that he offered. Importantly, there's also been a difference in how this situation has been described now by our Secretary of State and our UN ambassador. This has been a constant problem with this administration and I'm sure that it's perhaps happened in other administrations, but this is a textbook example of that. Nikki Haley, our UN ambassador, said, quote, she called the violence a brutal, sustained campaign to cleanse the country of an ethnic minority. Whereas today, Secretary of State Tillerson said, quote, whether it meets all the criteria of ethnic cleansing, we continue to determine ourselves. And he also asked for patience in the situation. Once again, from the White House and from the administration, on controversial and important issues, you often get two or three or four or five different answers depending upon who is giving their judgment and their opinion and their perspective. And I hope that the Congress will pass this resolution and that we can look into taking further action uh, for this severe crime against humanity. I yield back, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castro. We now go to Mr. Joe Wilson of South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I am grateful to support H.R. 3542, the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act. I appreciate Chairman Ed Royce for coordinating with Ranking Member Elliot Engel this markup of such important legislation that we're hearing about today amidst a number of important initiatives to protect American families. This bipartisan action today is another indication of working together on this committee, including Congressman Seth Moulton as the original co-sponsor with me on this particular bill. We are grateful to be working with Chairwoman Ileana ross Leighton and Congressman Ted Deutsch and many others in expressing support for this crucial legislation that imposes direct sanctions on Hamas terrorists for using civilians as human shields. Hamas, financed by Iran, is embedding its forces near hospitals, mosques, and schools in the Gaza area and is intentionally putting it lives at risk and turning these civilians, especially women and children, into human shields. This is a gross violation of human rights and a violation of international law. It reveals the inhumanity of putting lives at risk of people they claim to represent. This legislation is important to ensure the lives of innocent civilians are saved by imposing direct and strong sanctions against Hamas in their uncivilized actions. In conclusion, I especially appreciate today the recognition of Taylor Force, a beloved U.S. Army veteran with family in my home state of South Carolina who was cowardly stabbed by a Palestinian terrorist. I yield back my time. Thank you. We go to Dina Titus of Nevada. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, too, support uh, all these measures that are before us, but I'd like to speak specifically about H. Resolution 401. Uh, thank you for uh, supporting that. This is the resolution that urges nations to outlaw the dog and cat meat trade. I've uh, been a co-sponsor of this legislation and worked in Congress to end this practice, end the dog and cat meat trade, end the use of dog leather, and end uh, other uh, undue harm or abuse that comes to these animals. Roughly 30 million dogs and 10 million cats annually are the victims of the meat trade in Asia. The extreme cruelty that these animals suffer is abhorrent, and we shouldn't turn a blind eye to these practices which run in conflict to our own animal cruelty laws. In American culture, we cherish dogs and cats as more than just random animals. They can serve as uh, therapy animals, search and rescue assistants, police dogs that aid with drug and bomb searches, they serve with airport security, they are companions, and they are cherished family pets. This resolution enjoys bipartisan support, and we must continue to work in a bipartisan manner to better protect animals, both in other countries and here at home in the United States. So I look forward to passing this resolution to signify our commitment to combating animal cruelty, and I yield back. Thank you. We go to Ted Poe, Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I support these bills, but before us today, I'd like to thank uh, Chairman Royce and Ranking Member Engel for marking them up. Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of five, but I'd like to talk about three. Uh, Mr. Mass bill, uh, H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act of 2017, is a very important piece of legislation. The bill takes aim at foreign supporters of Palestinian terrorism that targets Israel, our most endangered ally in the Middle East. The terrorist groups Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad only serve because they have outside support from foreign entities. For years, Iran and Qatar have been their primary state sponsors, giving millions of dollars to prop up thugs who target civilians and spark conflicts that have left the Gaza Strip in ruin. Hamas is a terrorist group that has proven it's more concerned with making war on Israel than building a Palestinian state. It spent millions of dollars in resources on building tunnels and rockets to attack Israeli civilians. This is not an organization interested in peace with its neighbors. It's not even an organization that wants to defend Palestinians. They are not building bomb shelters to protect people. Only weapons and terrorists are found in those tunnels. They launch indiscriminate rocket barrage on civilian targets while hiding within civilian populations. 
The UN has even reported that Hamas stored rockets in its schools. This terrorist plan, plain, this is terrorism, plain and simple. Both Iran and our so-called ally, Qatar, are responsible for this. The bill would hold them accountable. It would effectively make sponsoring terrorism more costly by sanctioning those who do so. This is long overdue, and I hope the Congress passes this legislation very quickly. I also want to express my support for Mr. Grotham's resolution, uh, H.R. 407, condemning the persecution of Christians around the world. The fact is the world's largest religion is also the world's most persecuted religion. Last month in Cairo, a Coptic priest was stabbed to death while collecting humanitarian aid. Father Riz Allah was killed simply for his Christian faith. According to Open Doors USA, 322 Christians are killed each month and 214 churches and Christian properties are destroyed each month. We have all heard about the horrible persecution of Christians in the Middle East at the hands of terrorist actors like ISIS. Christian communities dating back to the time of Christ have been wiped out in, ser in service of ISIS's perverted ideology of hatred. It's not just terrorists uh, targeting Christians. Government-sponsored Christian persecution is a major driver. These are some of the nations. North Korea, Iran, Pakistan, and Putin's dictatorship of Russia regularly target Christian populations. I've had a family member that was in uh, Russia last year. We haven't heard anything probably in the national media about the Christian persecution that is taking place under Putin, but it is there. Christians in these countries face restrictive legislation, imprisonment, and in some cases, executions. It's increasingly dangerous to be a Christian in today's world. I'm glad the bill names and shames those countries that criminalize Christianity. This will undoubtedly bring comfort to those who are persecuted, especially persecuted Christians around the world. So we send that message across the world that we refuse to be silent. I also want to comment on the Taylor Force Act the Palestinian Authority pays terrorists who kill Israelis. If a terrorist is in jail or is, is killed, the family member gets the money. This hired murder for hire, this hired murder scheme by the Palestinian Authority is a criminal action. And it's time that the world understands that the Palestinian pays people to kill Israelis. And the idea that the United States would give them any money is preposterous. So I support the bill that we, in the Taylor Force Act, that we stop American aid that goes to the Palestinian Authority, money that they use to pay terrorists to kill Israelis. And that's just the way it is. I'll yield back. Thank you, Judge. We go now to Brad Schneider of Illinois. Thank you, Chairman Royce, as well as Ranking Member Engel. Uh, for convening today's markup. I am pleased to support all the legislation in today's en bloc uh, package, in particular the Taylor Force Act that will e hopefully end the pay for slave practice we see coming from the Palestinian Authority, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act of 2017, and the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act. I appreciate the inclusion of my three amendments in today's en bloc package. I applaud the committee for highlighting the critical issue of cybersecurity and responsible cyberspace policy, in particular in light of foreign entities seeking to nefariously influence our elections. H.R. 3776, the Cyber Diplomacy Act, encourages our President to enter into arrangements with foreign governments to support international cyberspace policy and requires a status report one year after the agreement is reached. The status report will assess whether the parties to the arrangement have fulfilled their commitments. My amendment, would ensure that if such commitments are not fulfilled, we are notified what steps our government has taken or is planning to take to ensure all commitments will be fulfilled. This is a common sense amendment to keep Congress apprised of developments and ensure transparency in these agreements. I also appreciate this committee's consideration of multiple legislation to crack down on terrorist groups in the Middle East, including Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act, would sanction individuals and foreign governments that knowingly materially assist Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, or any affiliate or successor. H.R. 3542, the Hamas Human Shields Act, would sanction those affiliated with Hamas who are responsible for gross violations of human rights by their use of human shields. 
The use of human shields is a despicable act and should not be tolerated. My amendments to these two important bills put a spotlight on Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad's underground terrorist tunnels that place civilians in harm's way because of their placement in densely populated areas near schools, hospitals, and mosques. Just last month, UNRWA confirmed the discovery of yet another terrorist tunnel dug under one of its schools in Gaza. Also last month, Israel discovered and destroyed a PIJ tunnel that infiltrated Israel. A senior member of PIG, Khalid al Bats, said that the purpose of the tunnel was kidnapping soldiers. These tunnels are designed to serve as a conduit to conduct terrorist attacks against Israel, to kidnap civilians and soldiers, and to wreak havoc and fear among bordering communities. In 2006, Hamas used an underground tunnel to kill two Israeli soldiers and then captured Gilad Shalit, who was held captive for more than five years. These tunnels are a grave threat to our ally Israel, and we need to continue to raise the awareness of, the, of these underground terrorist tunnels and to prevent Hamas, PIJ, and others from using such tunnels to conduct terrorist attacks. I hope my colleagues will join me in supporting this important legislation, and I urge their swift passage, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back, Mr. Ron DeSantis of Florida. Well, I thank the, the chairman. I appreciate uh, the folks uh, involved in, in these bills, particularly my friend from Florida, Mr. Mast. I think the, the bill is uh, uh, well uh, long overdue. I think it's going to have a, a good impact, and I'm enthusiastically supportive of it. Uh, I also have uh, one way I think that could make it stronger. Uh, I'm not introducing it as an amendment because it does implicate jurisdiction in a different committee. Um, one of the things I think that, that we see that's been a problem is there's not really a way to get direct justice for American victor victims of Hamas terrorism. Uh, you're not allowed to go sue a government that is funding Hamas or directing Hamas um, and get justice. Uh, and, and I think that that, that would be good uh, to change that. So we'll be introducing legislation very soon uh, to amend the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, which will allow U.S. victims of terrorism to sue countries when the president determines uh, that the governments of those countries are engaged in terrorism, supporting certain groups like Hamas. Um, I think that that'll be good for victims. But I also think it'll create a deterrent for some of these countries. We hear a lot um, about Qatar funding Hamas, funding the Muslim Brotherhood, being involved with that. Well, going forward, if those governments know that there could be a right of action, um, obviously financially that would be an issue for them, but I think even more importantly, just politically, having those cases brought and being held accountable would not be something that they would look forward to doing. So potentially could help change behavior. Um, but I think by and large, I think we got a good set of bills. We are doing the, the Taylor Force Act as well. I'm really excited about that. that. I wish we would have passed that earlier in the year, but we are passing it now. When you have a government uh, or, or an entity like the Palestinian Authority that is honoring the victim, the honoring the perpetrators of terrorism, that if you massacre enough Jews, maybe you'll have a street named after you, maybe you'll have a sports stadium named after you, you'll be lauded in, in schools. Uh, that is absolutely unacceptable. And American tax dollars should not go to underwrite any of that. And so this is an important first step. So I look forward to uh, introducing our bill. I think it'll add some, uh, it'll be a good complement to what Mr. Mass has done here today. And I think it'll make an impact. So my hat's off to my friend from Florida, Brian Mast, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back, Mr. Espayat of New York. Thank you, Madam Chair, Ranking Member Engels. Thank you for continuing uh, this very impressive bipartisan work at this committee. I am proud to lend my support to the nine bills before us today, H.R. 1164, the Taylor Force Act, H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act, and H.R. 3542, Hamas Human Shield Prevention Act, are instrumental in advancing our position in support of the State of Israel, uh, one of our strongest, if not the strongest, ally in the region. We should be using every possible tool in order to fight any incitement and violence in the region and work towards peace. I stand with the support of the State of Israel, and I'm proud to lend my support to these pieces of legislation. I'm also a co-sponsor and a supporter of uh, H uh, 
Resolution 90, condemning ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya and calling for an end to the attacks in and an immediate restoration of humanitarian access to the, the state of Rakhine in Burma. More than a quarter of a million ethnic Rohingya Muslims have been forced from their homes into the Rakhine state of Myanmar to neighboring Bangladesh. They have uh, not done so in search of comfort. They have done so with the singular goal of survival. The government of Myanmar, now led by its political heir Aung San Suu Kyi, has, uh, with extraordinary prejudice, diminished the political voice and civil rights of the ethnic Rohingya Muslim population by now denying their citizenship and basic humanitarian rights. The resulting violence by the military, the manifestation of the will of the government of Myanmar against its own citizens, has now been described by the United Nations High Commissioner of human rights as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. This resolution affirms that there is no tolerance for the, by the United States of the human rights violation, murderous ethnic cleansing, and atrocities against civilians perpetrated by the government of Myanmar. As such, I am proud to lend my support. I also submitted an amendment, and I'm glad uh, to support H.R. 1415. Uh, and then to, to, uh, neglected to neglect the Tropical Diseases Act, which would support the treatment and elimination of neglected tropical diseases. Since our Hurricane Irma hit Puerto Rico, the death toll continues to rise. And today, the island has reported 70, uh, 76 possible cases of leptocirrhosis. Without treatment, leptocirrhosis can lead to kidney damage, meningitis, liver failure, respiratory distress, and of course, death. We need to ensure that individuals displaced by man-made and natural disasters are provided the treatment they deserve. Lastly, H.R. Uh, 336 reaffirms our strong commitment uh, with Mexico as a partner. It encourages continued security cooperation including uh, on violence reduction in Mexico, counterterrorism, and the increased trafficking of heroin and fentanyl. Just yesterday, the Drug Enforcement Administration reported that 80% of fentanyl seized in New York City is from the Sinaloa cartel. I think we need to be cracking down on drug cartels, not undocumented immigrants. They are the ones bringing the drugs to our nations, many of it through ports of entry. And so coming uh, to the United States uh, from these cartels, we must do everything possible, Madam Chair, to uh, stop them. I thank you, and I yield back my time. Thank you, Mr. Espaillat. Ted Yoho of Florida. Thank you, Madam Chair. I support all these uh, amendments and bills, and I think they're good, and look forward to voting on them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Liu? Not there. Mr. Cicilline. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I want to thank the Chairman and the Ranking Member for holding this markup today and for once again bringing before this committee a range of bipartisan measures, each of which I support. I'm happy to be a co-sponsor of the bill introduced by my Ranking Member, Mr. Engel, reaffirming the strong commitment to the United States-Mexico partnership. The relationship between Mexico and the United States goes back to our founding, and we've enjoyed a long friendship, a mutually beneficial partnership on issues ranging from drug trafficking border control, national security, environmental protection, and share deep roots between many of our citizens. I'm pleased to see such strong bipartisan support for this resolution, which recognizes the importance of the U.S.-Mexico relationship. I'm also a co-sponsor of Chairman Royce's cybersecurity bill, which will elevate, elevate the issue of cybersecurity within our diplomatic efforts and improve U.S. State Department engagement on issues of cyber diplomacy to promote a more open and secure internet. I strongly support the establishment of an ambassador for cyberspace at the State Department, as well as the other measures included in this legislation. I'm proud to co-sponsor H.R. 1415, the End Neglected Tropical Diseases Act, led by my colleagues Chris Smith and Gregory Meeks. I've had the opportunity, along with many of my colleagues, to visit and see for myself some of the areas of the world where neglected tropical diseases still run rampant, impacting the health of millions of people. The work that USAID, USAID and other government agencies have been doing on NTDs is life-saving, and this bill will only improve the ability of our various government agencies to coordinate and work collaboratively to ensure that treatment reaches as many people as possible as quickly as possible. 
House Resolution 401 urges all nations to outlaw the dog and cat meat trade, a practice that has lovers of animals I find abhorrent. I thank my colleague from Florida, Mr. Hastings, for being a devoted and outspoken advocate against the dog and cat meat trade in Asia, and I'm happy to be a co-sponsor of this important resolution. I support Representative Grothman's resolution condemning the persecution of Christians and other religious minorities worldwide. In recent years, there's been an increase in discrimination, targeting, persecution, and killing of Christians and other minority religious groups, particularly with the rise of the Islamic State and other extremist groups in the Middle East. All people should be free to practice their religion with tolerance and respect from their government and the communities in which they live. I want to thank Representative Crowley and Representative Shabbat for introducing Resolution 90, condemning ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya and calling for an end to the attacks in an immediate restoration of humanitarian access to the state of Rakhine in Burma, of which I'm a co-sponsor. The coordinated and concerted attacks against the Muslim Rohingya people of Burma are appalling and must be stopped by the Burmese authorities immediately. The country of Bangladesh has absorbed an astonishing number of Rohingya refugees, over 600,000 since the newest round of violence began. Accommodating this extreme number of people so quickly, many of whom have suffered severe trauma or have serious health concerns, is not an easy task. I commend the Bangladeshi government for their willingness to assist these people who have suffered so much, and I'm pleased to support this resolution as a co-sponsor. We're considering two bills today that will punish people and entities who engage in or support terrorist activity. Spearheaded by Representative Brian Mass and Josh Gottheimer, the Palestinian International Terrorist Support Prevention Act will impose sanctions on foreign people and governments to provide support to terrorist groups, including Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. And the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act condemns the abhorrent practice of using human shields by Hamas and imposes sanctions on Hamas-related entities that engage in or support the use of human shields. Finally, we're considering the Taylor Force Act, which seeks to end the despicable habit of the Palestinian Authority rewarding and incentivizing terrorism by paying the families of terrorists convicted of engaging in terrorism against Israel. This legislation is named in honor of U.S. Army veteran and West Point graduate Taylor Force, who was tragically killed by a Palestinian knife attack in 2016. This legislation will limit assistance that directly benefits the Palestinian Authority until they end the practice of paying terrorist families. The U.S. has not provided direct assistance to the Palestinian Authority since 2014, but we continue to fund organizations that work with the Palestinian Authority. This bill will end any assistance that directly benefits the Palestinian Authority until they end their terrorist payment system. I strongly support this legislation, which attempts to end the abhorrent practice that incentivizes and rewards terrorism. I want to be sure that we craft a policy response, that as we do that, we do it in a thoughtful way that achieves our desired goals without unintended consequences that could have a negative impact on American interests in the West Bank and Gaza, on the stability of the Palestinian-controlled territories, or that could do harm to Palestinian women and children. And that's why I support the amendment being offered by my Democratic colleague, Mr. Conley, that would place an exemption in this legislation for programs that provide vaccinations to children. Additionally, I think it's important that we as policymakers get a detailed account of the impact of this legislation once it's put into place, and that's why I'm offering an amendment to require a one-time report that outlines the programs, projects, and activities that are suspended as a result of this legislation. I want to thank the chairman again and the ranking member for their support of my amendment. I sincerely hope that by passing the Taylor Force Act, we send a message to the Palestinian Authority that this disgusting payment system must be stopped. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, David. We go to uh, Lee Zeldin of New York. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the committee's consideration today of the Taylor Force Act. I want to thank Mr. Lamborn for his leadership introducing this bill, and I'm proud to be the original co-sponsor of this important proposal. It's important to understand why this legislation is so key to pass. Innocent Americans and Israelis are being murdered by Palestinian terrorists. Those Palestinian terrorists are being treated as martyrs for committing these acts of terrorism. And while the U.S. sends our tax dollars to the Palestinian Authority, these terrorists and their families are being financially rewarded by the PA. Taylor Force is an American hero, a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. He deployed overseas in defense of our freedoms and liberties and everything that makes our nation the greatest nation in the world. The Taylor Force Act will prevent American foreign aid from funding the PA unless the Secretary of State certifies that the PA has taken credible steps to end acts of violence against U.S. and Israeli citizens, 
publicly condemns such acts of violence, terminates payments for acts of terrorism against the U.S., and revokes any law authorizing this payment system. This legislation is long overdue. I thank Chairman Royce for his leadership in ensuring that this bill came up for a vote in this committee to get sent to the floor for passage. I encourage all of my colleagues to support it, and I yield back. Mr. Sherman of California. Thank you. Perhaps everything has been said, but I haven't said it. Thank you for yielding five minutes to me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, I want to commend you for bringing uh, uh, worthy bills to this committee and uh, for doing it in a bipartisan manner. Uh, these bills are uh, worthy of support, and that's why I have co-sponsored each and every one of them. Um, one deals with the United States-Mexico partnership, another the dog and cat meat trade in Asian countries. We have a bill, one on tropical diseases, uh, the Palestinian international terrorism, the use of human shields by Hamas, and a resolution condemning uh, Burma's military for attacking uh, the Rohingya um, Roh uh, uh, Muslims. Um, I especially want to focus on H. Conrez uh, 90, condemning the ethnic cleansing of Rohingya uh, uh, introduced uh, by uh, Mr. Crowley and Mr. Shabbat. Um, in August of this year, Burma's military, also known as Myanmar, launched uh, a military operations against Rohingya Muslims, and over, over 500,000 Rohingya have fled to neighboring Bangladesh. The resolution calls upon the Burmese military to cease attacks against the Rohingya uh, and restore humanitarian access for them. It expresses support for Bangladesh for providing refuge for so many uh, refugees and calls upon the President to impose sanctions on those responsible for human rights abuses, including members of the Burmese military and uh, security services. Not only should we take a principled stand, but we need to remind the world that we're taking a principal stand. The United States is among the forefront of nations trying to protect the Rohingya. Contrast that to China, which seems to care only about its relationship with uh, the uh, Burmese regime. And we should remind the Muslim world in particular that we are the only country to ever bomb a Christian nation in order to protect Muslims, not once but twice, both Kosovo and Bosnia were bombed by the United. Uh, both Kosovo and Bosnia were protected by United States bombing of Serbia. Uh, I uh, strongly support uh, two resolutions that uh, condemn uh, Palestinian terrorism. Uh, one in particular is H uh, R 3542, the Hamas Human Shields Prevention Act, uh, that has been uh, introduced by Mr. Wilson. This legislation sanctions Hamas members for their use of human shields. Uh, the House passed similar legislation regarding Hezbollah last month, and I was pleased to co-sponsor that legislation as well. Uh, H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support uh, Prevention Act of 2017, introduced by Mr. Mast, calls for the imposition of sanctions against supporters of Hamas its findings mention that Hamas has received significant financial and military support from Qatar and possibly Iran as well. And it is time for us to reevaluate our relationship with Qatar in light of a number of recent developments, but especially focused on their support for, Ma uh, for Hamas. Uh, finally, uh, there uh, is the Taylor Force Act, uh, which I strongly support. And rather than speak at great length, I'll incorporate by reference Mr. Deutsch's comments, which I think were excellent on this subject. Uh, I, I think that his phrase, uh, pay for slay, is, uh, is correct. I don't know whether he developed that or, or got it from, from elsewhere. And I believe that another one of our members used the term murder for hire. They are both applicable. So. Uh, I, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your work and yield back uh, my time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We go to uh, Brian Mast of Florida. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, you know, I could say that following my service in the U.S. Army, I, I chose to volunteer alongside the Israeli Defense Forces because our countries do share very common values that all countries should share, uh, those ideals of freedom, democracy, and mutual respect for the human rights of all people. My service has also brought me face to face with those who do not have a mutual respect for those ideals that, that we should all be rallying around. Hamas preaches destruction to Israel, death to the values that we as citizens of the United States hold dear. It is well known that Hamas is a foreign terrorist organization specifically designated by the United States government as a global terrorist. The organization is responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Israelis, for dozens of U.S. citizens. Similarly, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad was designated a foreign terrorist by the Department of State and has also been named a specially designated global terrorist by the Department of Treasury. And this foreign terrorist organization has claimed credit for multiple terrorist attacks in Israel, including an attack that killed a U.S. citizen, Elisa Flatow, a student from New Jersey who was participating in a Jewish student program while in Israel. My bill, H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support and Prevention Act, targets these groups. It targets them by imposing sanctions on those who knowingly and materially assist Hamas or the Palestinian Islamic Jihad or any affiliate or any successor organization. It will require that the President report to Congress on foreign entities that contribute to support networks of Hamas, and it will require that we impose sanctions on those bad actors until they cease to do so. Under this legislation, the administration will re be required to impose two or more sanctions to ensure that they understand the United States will not stand by for any foreign group, state, or person providing assistance to any terrorist organization. You know, for far too long, the number one terror state sponsor in the world, Iran, they have armed their dangerous tentacles, one of them being Hamas. The Israeli authorities have seized vessels filled with weapons and anti-ship missiles coming from Iran headed towards the Gaza Strip. From the Gaza Strip, there have been hundreds of missiles that have been fired into Israel that came directly from Iran. Hamas is not the only terrorist organization that benefits from Iranian support. The Palestinian Islamic Jihad receives considerable support from Iran. There's been one estimation that there's been up to $70 million a year going to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad coming from Iran. This bill will increase accountability. It will further isolate these bad actors. It will hold countries like Iran responsible for assisting in violent extremism. Foreign supporters, they have to face consequences for being associated with, for contributing to, for participating in these heinous terror networks. Beyond that, I want to lend my support for the, the work the whole of this committee has done today. It is outstanding work, especially the work on the Taylor Force Act. I have had the opportunity to speak with a very high level uh, official from uh, the Palestinian area. And when I questioned him about the payments given to families, he said to me very callously and very arrogantly, he, he actually chuckled to me, that it was nothing more than, than what is like our social security here in the United States of America. To the Palestinians there, they believe that there's a special social security that should be given for killing our Jewish friends. And I can't think of much more that would be more disgusting than that. And the U.S. should play absolutely no role in rewarding this rancid anti-Semitism and this rancid hatred. All of the work today, it's proof that confront, confronting hatred and supporting our ally Israel, it is not an issue of left versus right. This has been very bipartisan work today. It is an issue of right versus wrong. I thank everybody for the work today, and I yield back, Chairman. And uh, Major Brian Mass, we thank you. We, we now go to Thomas Swazi of New York. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and the ranking member for uh, your Bipartisan leadership once again. We're very grateful to you and I want to commend my colleagues for the good work that they've done here today 
in putting forward these nine bills, which I intend to support. I'd like to speak today in support of H.R. 1164, the Taylor Force Act. The Taylor Force Act withholds U.S. aid that benefits the Palestinians until they take demonstrable steps towards ending violence and incitement against Israeli citizens. For too long, we've allowed the Palestinian Authority to play a duplicitous game. They talk about nonviolence, about wanting peaceful coexistence with Israel, but they want to be a negotiating partner, partner with Israel. Then they turn around and pay millions of dollars each year to terrorists that make peaceful coexistence impossible. The Palestinian Authority calls it a welfare program, as Mr. Mass just pointed out. But what kind of welfare program rewards people for committing crimes, heinous crimes? The Palestinian Authority pays its teachers about $500 per month. It pays terrorists, like the one who killed Taylor Force, up to $3,500 a month for life. These are demented priorities. These payments to terrorists make peace impossible. They're an affront to American values. So it's time we send a clear message to President Abbas and the rest of the Palestinian leadership. It should be an easy choice. Stop supporting and incentivizing terrorism that you claim to oppose. If you cannot make that simple choice, we cannot support you. We owe that to Taylor Force. Taylor represented the best of America, a West Point graduate, an Army veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, an MBA student, a young man with a bright future ahead of him. And then his life was cut short in a brutal terrorist stabbing in Israel. His killer went on to stab 11 other people, Jews and Arabs, men and women, one woman even pregnant. It was the third Palestinian attack against Israelis just on that one single day in March of 2016. And all of those attackers, and others like them, under this welfare system, would be rewarded. The Taylor Force Act seeks to rectify this injustice. Now a brief word about Hamas. Hamas has killed hundreds of Israeli citizens and rained rockets on Israeli cities. It has also caused untold suffering for two million Palestinians in Gaza who live under its violent and corrupt rule. We hope that last month's reconciliation with Fatah is a first step towards disarming this terrorist group and stripping it of its power. But it leaves many questions unanswered, and we need to keep the pressure on with further sanctions. H.R. 3542 sanctions Hamas for its human shields, while H.R. 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act of 2017, of which I'm an original co-sponsor, imposes sanctions against Hamas's foreign supporters. Again, I thank my colleagues for their leadership on all the issues put forth to our committee today, whether we're speaking out for justice for murdered Israelis, the grave humanitarian crisis affecting the Rohingya, or shedding light on the persecution of Christians around the world. This committee continuously shows its commitment to human rights, justice, stability, and may I mention bipartisanship. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Tom. We go to... Uh Mike McCall of Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to first uh, highlight the U.S.-Mexico resolution. This bipartisan resolution was introduced by myself and uh, Ranking Member Elliot Engel. It reaffirms a strong commitment to the U.S.-Mexico partnership. As a Texan, Chairman of the U.S.-Mexico Interparliamentary Group and Chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, I cannot overstate the importance of a strong partnership between the United States and Mexico. Uh, and let me be clear, this is a partnership. There are times in which our respective countries may disagree on matters of foreign policy, but it is of critical importance to the economic and security interest of both countries to work through our differences in a respectful, productive manner. The legislative branches of our respective governments have a special role to play in this regard. As chairman of the U.S.-Mexico IPG, I've seen firsthand the power of legislative diplomacy. In June of this year, I led a delegation of members to Mexico during one of the most trying times in our long relationship. Needless to say, a little respect and civil discourse can go a long way uh, between our two delegations, and we made a lot of progress on a number of issues. So as we continue to engage uh, Mexico in the many press pressing issues of the day. I hope this resolution will serve as a reminder uh, as to why this relationship is so important. 
And next, I'd like to voice my support uh, for a bill you sponsored, Mr. Chairman, and I was honored to co-sponsor, and that's the Cyber uh, Diplomacy Act. As we all know, cyberspace is increasingly becoming a venue for malicious actors to harm the United States and our allies. At a time when cyber landscape is becoming complex and dangerous, we should uh, be sharpening the tools in our toolkit. As such, the Cyber Diplomacy Act allows our State Department to better perform 21st century diplomacy by establishing an ambassador for cyberspace to help promote our cyber, cyber interests internationally. It enhances transparency at the State Department's current and future cyber arrangements with our partners and ensures our cyber policy evolves with the landscape by requiring each new administration to produce a strategy relating to international cyberspace. Simply put, we need better coordination at the State Department to keep the internet free, open, and safe from malicious activities of adversaries who threaten our interests. To that end, Mr. Chairman, I hope uh, to make this bill even stronger through an amendment that would specify that the ambassador for cyberspace, among other things, would be responsible for helping coordinate our interagency efforts to counter cyber terrorism. This very simple amendment would go a long way to ensure the State Department plays a significant and effective role in preventing terrorists from ex exploiting our cyberspace. And finally, I'd like to highlight uh, the bill, uh, the Taylor Force Act, of critical importance. This legislation is a critical step in ensuring the kind of atrocity that took place on March 8th of last year, which left former U.S. Army officer and Vanderbilt student Taylor Force dead to make sure that that is not repeated. Specifically, legislation would withhold U.S. economic assistance to the Palestinian Authority until it has taken credible steps to end the promotion of violence against Americans and Israeli citizens, uh, fully stop the payments for acts of terrorism, which takes place, and publicly condemns acts of violence, and cooperate in investigations of such acts. I had the honor to share the stage with Mr. Force last month uh, with you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and I hope no family ever has to endure a tragedy like he and his family have. In fact, this committee should do all it can to ensure that that is the case. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, Ms. McCall. Uh, we go to Dan Donovan of New York. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am pleased to support all the measures being offered in today's markup. I specifically like to speak of three of, about three of them. The Taylor Force Act is a bill that was named after Taylor Force, a U.S. citizen and war veteran who was fatally stabbed by a Palestinian assailant while studying abroad as a private citizen. The Palestinian Authority despicably continues to give payouts to families of so-called martyrs who commit acts of terrorism. While the U.S. has responded by reducing the economic support fund for the PA dollar for dollar, this has not been enough for the PA to end their practice of rewarding terrorists. According to PA financial statements, from calendar year 2013 to 2016, U.S. budget support has averaged about 13 percent of the PA's annual external support and 3.5 percent of annual PA spending over that time. Clearance revenues, tax and customs amounts due the PA that Israel collects on its behalf and transfers to it per a 1994 agreement over that same period averaged around 50 percent of annual PA spending. Palestinians are among the world's largest per capita recipients of international foreign aid. Any aid that we give to the PA puts money in their coffers that then indirectly supports their heinous payouts. It is time that we end funding to the PA, and the Taylor Force Act does just that. This bill would, beginning in fiscal year 2018 and continuing for the five subsequent fiscal years, withhold U.S. economic assistance that directly benefits the PA unless the PA has taken the following four actions. First, it has taken credible steps to end acts of violence against Israelis and Americans perpetrated or materially supported by those under PA control. Two, it stops payments for acts of terrorism. Three, it revokes its laws compensating prisoners who commit acts of terrorism based on length of prison sentence, 
or taken comparable actions that have the effect of revoking such laws. And fourth, publicly condemns acts of violence and cooperates in investigations of such acts. The United States tax taxpayer dollars should never go to compensate individuals who commit terrorism, even indirectly. The Taylor Force Act will put an end to this practice. I'd like to also speak, Mr. Chairman, on the resolution to impose sanctions with respect to foreign support for Palestinian terrorism. Hamas was designated a foreign terrorist organization by the State Department on October 8, 1997, and named a specially designated global terrorist by the Department of the Treasury under Executive Order 1224. This act will require the President to support, to report on, and, and issue sanctions against foreign persons, agencies, of foreign states and governments that support Hamas. Hamas has been intertwined with Iran ideologically, politically, and um, uh, militarily. Qatar has a strategic opportunity to sever itself from Hamas and by extension, Iran, which is a state sponsor of terrorism. My amendment here will require the administration to assess the extent to which all countries in the Gulf Cooperation Council, including Qatar, participate in initiatives of the Terrorist Financial Targeting Center. It will also require reporting on the extent to which the Terrorist Financial Targeting Center has been utilized to address financial support for Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. This will ensure that Congress knows Qatar is complying with the classified memorandum of understanding Secretary Tillerson signed with Qatar this past summer. We must ensure that terrorist financing, wherever it comes from, is cut off. This bill and my amendment does just that. And finally, Mr. Chairman, about religious persecution, H.R. 407. It's deeply saddening that we must consider a resolution condemning religious persecution in 2017, 240 years after America's founders held its self-evident truth that people can worship how they choose. Religious discrimination is a global human rights crisis, and we must speak up when a religious group is persecuted for their beliefs. This resolution affirms that religious freedom is a fundamental right of every individual and condemns the persecution of Christians and other religious minorities in regions where worshiping how one chooses is a punishable offense. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the remainder of my time. Uh, Mr. Scott Perry, General Scott Perry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just want to echo the the adulation and uh, um, thanks of the other members to the bipartisan efforts of the leadership of this committee in moving this package of bills forward. And they're all good bills and all worthy of of individual praise. I want to call particular praise to 401, urging the outlaw the outlawing of the dog and cat meat trade and to enforce existing laws in the trade. Uh, House, 40, uh, House Resolution 407 for the persecution of Christians around the world, uh, and a specific uh, import on the Taylor Force Act. And the, the thing that I lament most about the Taylor Force Act and uh, 2712, the Palestinian International Terrorism Support Prevention Act, and the uh, 3542, the Hamas Human Shield Prevention Act, it has taken this long for us to deal with these issues and get these bills through the committee and to the floor. It would be my hope that they would move quickly to the floor and pass easily and quickly in the United States Senate. And finally, for condemning the ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya. And the only thing I lament there, while it's appropriate to, to condemn the ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya and call for an end to the attacks, uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to do much uh, for the fate of the Rohingya. And in this case, it is, in my opinion, the duty of the UN to intervene directly and immediately uh, to stop their persecution. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you again for, for this effort and this package of good bills. Uh, uh, it's my hope and intention that they move to the floor very quickly now in their past. And I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to be present for this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield. Thank you. We go to uh, Jim Sensenbrenner of Wisconsin. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I support all of these bills, and 
unlike my colleagues who said that everything has been said and ask for five minutes, I will say that everything has been said. There's nothing more I can add, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Sensenbrenner, for yielding back. Do other members feel the same way? <laughs> um, now, who, who else seeks time? Hearing no further requests for recognition, the question occurs on the items considered on block. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the measures considered on block are agreed to. Without objection, the measures considered on block are ordered favorably reported as amended. Staff is directed to make any technical and conforming changes, and the chair is authorized to seek House consideration under suspension of the rules. So this concludes our business for today, and I, again, I want to thank our ranking member, Mr. Engel, and all of our committee members for their contributions, their assistance with today's markup. The committee stands adjourned.